Hi guys! I'm finally doing my life update that so many of you have requested and I just want to thank you so much for all of your questions and for caring and being so supportive and being there. I just love that we can all reach out to each other, help each other out, bounce ideas back and forth, and just support each other in this space. I'll try to answer as many questions as I can without making this video too crazy long and if I did not get your question please leave your comments down below and I will answer your questions in the next life update that I do. Okay the first question is from Jane Manithi Jones. I'm wondering if you've had any contact with your ex since the divorce. I can imagine how difficult it's been for you since he left so abruptly. Well, first he did not leave. He just wanted out of our marriage and didn't want to work on anything and there was no discussion. He didn't want to talk about it and that is what happened. So since then, the only contact has been one email that he sent me with our divorce appointment paperwork attached to it. That's it. And when I opened the email, I saw that it was attached. I guess he was afraid that it wasn't going to get to my new address and I wasn't going to make it to the divorce, but I made it and I didn't respond to the email. I just deleted it and that's it. There has been zero contact, no texting, no phone calls, no social media, no nothing, zero. And honestly, you guys, that has been the best way to handle this and to move on and to heal as quickly as possible. If I can give you any advice, if you're going through a breakup or a divorce or anything like that, cut off ties 100%. I understand that you can't do that if you have children. I've been through that also. I co-parented with the father of my children, so I know that you have to stay in contact. But whenever you can, only have contact when it has to do with the kids if you absolutely have to but if there are no children involved i promise you cutting off contact a million percent block them on social media block them in on your phone get rid of their number so you won't call them just completely cut off contact because every time your brain starts going back there and you start having those thoughts you're reliving it you're starting over from scratch a lot of you are saying i don't understand how quickly you moved on how are you doing it i just don't get it i had a lot of practice getting over very painful breakups and before i got married this time i lived alone for almost five years and i did a lot of work on myself a lot of growing a lot of healing and I had to get over very painful breakups in the past. So this time when my ex-husband said, that's it, I don't love you anymore, I don't want to be married to you anymore, and there's no talking about it, of course it was super hard at first. I mean, if you go back and look at the videos that I posted, you'll see I, it, it was heartbreaking. It was so hard and it was stirring up all of the pain from past relationships. But what quickly helped me get through it is to remember all of the learning and growing that I did. And the feelings were so familiar of pain from past breakups that I was like, there's no way that I'm going through this again. And I had to remember what I used to do to get through that pain because I had done it before. And I knew if I did it before that I could do it again. And I didn't have to wait years to allow myself to suffer for months or years or however long we allow ourselves to suffer. It's a choice. If you don't want to hurt anymore, you grieve, you get it out, you come to peace with it, and you move forward, do not look back. What helped me the most figure out how to get through this is so many books that I read after my last breakup. I'll link everything below for you in the description box if you're interested in reading any of these books. I really use the same tools and the same principles to help me through this. One of the biggest tricks that I can tell you guys that I still use myself is when I first started learning it, when I had a thought in my mind that was negative about anything, about the past, about something I was anxious about, about a breakup, about, oh, what's he doing? Who is he with? Any of those kind of thoughts that are not healthy for us and are not going to help anything, 
I would literally out loud say, stop, stop, stop. I would stop those thoughts and I would think about something else. And if it kept popping back into my head, I would write out loud, say, stop. Now I have practiced that so much that when my mind goes to having these thoughts that are not healthy for me, I don't even have to think stop. I started thinking it in my head. In my head, I would just be like, stop, stop, not out loud. Then it just became habit. So now I know when I start getting these negative thoughts in my mind, I just know automatically to shift to something else and it works. It's such a simple concept, but it will change your life. This is from Taylor Maid. I have a question. I know you mentioned that your ex never acted any differently, but did you ever notice small things here and there that made you get a gut feeling something was off? Did your woman's intuition ever make you feel things weren't right? I know this would help a lot of us women out. Thank you. Thank you for your question, Taylor. This is definitely a good question. When I think back to the day that my ex-husband said I want a divorce and I had no clue, for whatever reason, he went out of his way to make sure that I thought everything was fine, like buying me flowers and a beautiful Valentine's Day gift with a card that said how much he loved me, um, we had plans for a summer vacation this summer, actually, and my kids and grandkids were supposed to stay with us. It was all set. Uh, we were house hunting just a few days before he told me he wanted a divorce, sitting on the couch cuddling online, looking at you know virtual tours of houses that we were going to buy, and we were still having sex. There was nothing, nothing that gave me a sign at all. However, now that six months have gone by and I'm thinking about anything that was different or changing, I really, there's no way that I could have known. It, once in a while, if I would ask him what's the matter, if he just seemed a little off, it was like, oh, nothing, or it would be something small. I just think that we can't beat ourselves up if someone else doesn't want to communicate. There's nothing that we can do. Sometimes we see the signs, and even now looking back, it's the only advice I can give you is you have to communicate. You have to. Like, if one person isn't say, telling the other person what's bothering them and how they truly feel, you can't expect the other person to be a mind reader, and I'm not going to beat myself up over that. Whatever thoughts he was having within himself or conversations with, I don't know, other people or inside his own head, those conversations never came out directly, clearly, how unhappy he was or that anything was wrong. And I felt like I was completely blindsided. I feel like there's only so much that your intuition can tell you if the other person isn't communicating with you. What I can tell you is that I am happier than I have been in a long time. I'm happier within myself. I'm happier being near my family. And I truly believe that everything happens for a reason to push, push us in a different direction for things that we normally would have never done. I, when I said I do and I committed to marrying him, that was forever. That was in sickness and in health through better or for worse for everything. Like I was in it, but when the other person does not want to work on it and just wants to bail and doesn't want to talk about it, there's nothing you can do except for start taking care of yourself. You can't stay stuck in that and try to force it to happen. Some people do. I understand that. I've gotten some comments of people that said, I stuck it out for 20 years after my husband cheated or after my husband said he wanted a divorce and now we're still together. For me, I couldn't do that. I needed to get my sanity back and I couldn't live not feeling super close and connected with my spouse. I just, for me personally, I can't do that. 
So all I can say is I believe do what works for you, do what's right for you, do what's best for you. And for me, it was taking care of myself, moving forward and not staying stuck in what I had no control over. This question is from Tara Lynn DeGraw. I know you don't want to talk about it, but you said the divorce request came totally out of the blue. When you look back, do you see things you missed? I asked because I am divorced too, and the first time he asked me for a divorce, he was cheating. I never saw it coming. We tried to make it work, or at least I did. He never stopped cheating. And then a brick hit me, and I stopped trying to fight the train of the divorce. But now, as I look back, I try to learn something from the pain. I see it so clearly, and I can't believe how delusional I was thinking he was in it for me. Do you, did you have that realization too? Like I just said, he went out of his way to pretend that everything was fine in every sense of the word, physically, emotionally, every way possible. So no, I did not see it coming at all. Like I said, the only thing that I did notice is how incredibly happy and at peace I am now. So I have to believe that for whatever reason that happened, that it did happen for a reason. I truly believe that we have more than one soulmate in life and I do believe that he was one of my soulmates. He was there for me when I went through a life-threatening surgery and I was in and out of the hospital. He was by my side. He was an amazing man. He was there through my grandchildren being born when I was too sick to have even driven there and I wanted to be in the delivery room with my daughter and if he didn't drive me there and wait in the hospital waiting room while I was in with my daughter giving birth, I could have never have done that and he was there for me. He was also there when my dad passed away just over two years ago and that's why I believe that we have many soulmates in our life and for some reason that was the end of our journey and I have to trust that. I believe that we have to trust in the process, we have to trust the journey. Did I want my marriage to end? No. I mean, I was so 100% sure that I had met my forever soulmate after working so hard on myself for that five years. I did so much self-growth before we got married, lived alone, did the healing, did the growing, met him, it, thought we were incredibly happy, and then things fell apart. It did not make sense to me until I realized that we just have to trust the journey. And sometimes it's just for a small period of time that we get to spend with someone. I was so 100% sure that he was my forever person that we got married on my birthday. So now every year for the rest of my life on my birthday, I remember that was our wedding day. But, you know, my birthday's coming up, the big 5-0, and I'm not freaking out about that. I mean, maybe there were a few moments in the beginning where I was like, oh, this is like the most horrible thing that could happen. I don't want to be thinking about my divorce on my birthday for the rest of my life. But if I look at it like everything I just told you and how grateful I am to have had him in my life for the three and a half years that I did, that's a gift and happy birthday. And I'm grateful for that. And is it sad that our marriage ended and that he's not a part of my life anymore and I feel like I don't know who he is right now? Yeah, it's sad. It's a loss for sure and it sucks. But if we can switch our thought process around instead of looking at everything as negative and against us and horrible and torturous, switch your thought process to the positive things that you can find out of all of the horrible things. Sorry, <laughs> sorry for the motorcycles. I'm like right by the road. Just switch your thought process and change it into positive thoughts and find the good that can come out of every single hurtful thing in our lives. Honestly, you guys, like, I wish him happiness. I don't, I don't wish any bad thoughts on him. He was there for me through a lot of hard things in my life and even though I feel like it was very wrong what happened and painful, I don't wish him anything bad. And 
I don't know if he was cheating. I know 99% of you were, were saying that he was cheating. I didn't catch him physically cheating. I did not find this out for myself, but a lot of you let me know that he was quickly in another Facebook public relationship before we were even officially divorced. And I don't know if he was seeing her before we were married. I have no idea. Maybe he was, maybe he wasn't, but honestly, it doesn't really matter. And I, again, found out from you guys, because I don't follow what's going on, people were leaving comments saying that they've already broken up. So I don't know. I have no idea what happened. I feel like the biggest thing is you need to concentrate on yourself, not ever look to another person to make you happy. If you are gauging your happiness and your worth, on making another person happy, it's never going to work. Everything is gonna crash and burn. You're never gonna find happiness. So I feel like maybe in a way he was looking to me to make him happy. I don't know. I'm not going to speak for him and I'll never do that. I will never bash him. I will never, if you guys are leaving bad comments, it's hard for me to keep up with everything. I have a virtual scanner who is supposedly scanning all of my um, comments and I don't want to hear anything bad put out there about him. It's just not fair and he was an amazing husband to me for the three and a half years that we were together. But that is over now and we just were not right for each other or we still would have been together. This next question is from Teresa Michelle. Do you do anything for work outside of YouTube? Nope. This is it, you guys. This is what I love. I have been blogging for five years. I This is my passion. I love beauty. I love makeup. I love fashion. It's just always been a passion of mine. And I love helping people. It helps myself heal inside when I can share my journey and share my struggles and how I got through them. And I love hearing that it's helping you guys. It just, it, it makes me know that I'm on the right path and I'm doing the right thing. Even though so many times when I'm posting very vulnerable parts of my life, it's hard, it's really tough. And I'm an introvert. I would say 75% introvert, 25 extrovert. When people see me out, they don't they would never know because I'm kind of the life of the party type of person when I'm out. But being an introvert, if you don't know what that means, the the main meaning of being an introvert is you need to be with yourself to fuel and to recharge and to get that energy back. People that are extroverts, they fuel up and they recharge being out with people and they want to keep doing that. I need a lot of alone time, a lot of quiet time, a lot of time to be introspective and to reflect on life and how to grow internally. And for me, that fuels me. But there's definitely that 25% of me that needs that socialization and needs to be out and like let loose and be with friends and be with people and family. Absolutely, I 100% need that too. What is your favorite thing about living in New England? Being near my family. It's that simple. There's really nothing else I love about living here except for being around my family and being around my friends. I am an ocean girl. I love salt sea sand. That is my heart and soul. And you guys, I'm glad I'm doing this video right now because I can tell you that I am going on vacation with a girlfriend of mine who invited me on her family vacation to stay at their ocean house in Delaware. I am so incredibly grateful that they invited me. I'm definitely having some anxiety because of my physical issues and just it's going to be a lot physically, but my friend has a lot of the same issues. We call ourselves the bionic women because both of our bodies are full of metal from accidents that we've been through. So we bonded on that level. So we get each other and we understand dealing with chronic pain and what it's like how to stay positive. So we're doing this journey together and, and I love you. Thank you again so much. I will see you tonight. 
so I probably won't be posting any more videos for a couple of weeks, but if I do have time at night or if I can't sleep, I do have some pre-recorded videos that I will try to edit while I'm on vacay. And definitely follow me on Instagram and Facebook because I will po be posting pictures from my trip so you can stay updated with me and you will know where I'm at. My Instagram and Facebook is Beauty 101 by Lisa and I will post as many pictures and video clips as I can. Oh, and her next question is, are there any places you would like to travel to? Well, I'm going to one anywhere that there's the ocean and it's warm and I can be by the ocean that's where I want to be. Given you stick to a pretty strict food plan, what do you eat when you go out to restaurants and do you have any tips for eating out? Um, yeah, that's tough. Like when I'm going on this trip now, I am packing most of my food to bring with me because I have digestive issues and I'm a vegan and there's not a lot of foods that I can eat and still feel good. I definitely don't want to be on this vacation or going out to eat and not feeling good. It's just not worth it to me. I want to feel at my best when I'm traveling and when I'm out. I really don't want to sway too much away from what I normally eat and what I know works for my body. Um, the two places that are always perfect for me to go out to eat is Japanese because I'll get peanut avocado rolls and steamed vegetable dumplings. Those are two of my favorite foods to get. Also Mexican food, which I order like this side dish of guacamole, mild salsa, just plain old rice, and I get the fajita wraps and I'll make my own little fajitas and that is like my favorite thing to get. Other than that, it's really tough for me to go out to eat. Sometimes if I'm absolutely starving and I'm out to eat and there's nothing, I'll just eat some french fries, but that is not what's gonna be great for my stomach. But if I'm really hungry, I'll do that. Other than that, I just make sure I always have food with me so I'm never hungry. And sometimes I may have to eat before I go out and just have something little like bread and olive oil or just something to so I feel like I'm joining in with the dinner. Have you ever tried herbs to balance or treat your thyroid? No, I've never tried anything. I am on medication, a compounded medication for my thyroid, and my doctor told me not to take anything, not to take iodine, not to take herbs, supplements, nothing, and we need to find that perfect balance with my medication, and we are close. I am feeling so much better. Have you been dating? Oh, yes, I have. I am the bachelorette. <laughs> The almost 50 year old bachelorette. You bet I'm dating. I have met some amazing people. I'm not going into it expecting anything. I definitely need to push myself to go out and meet people. Like I said, I'm an introvert. I'm very content with staying home and working on the computer and reading books and just hanging out. I'm really almost too good by myself. So I need to push myself to go out and meet new people and it's been really amazing. I'm definitely not rushing anything and I'm only dating people that I feel there could be a genuine connection with and something in the future. I'm not looking to just have a boyfriend for the rest of my life. I do still believe in love. I do still believe that there is someone out there for everyone, but I'm not going to just date to date or just go out to just for the heck of it. If I'm going out with someone, it's because I truly think that there could be something more or something in the future. I feel that when I meet the right person, that it's going to be the right timing, that we're both going to know, and I'm just not rushing anything. Thanks for all your videos. You are so welcome, Teresa. This next question is from Debbie Bridwell. Lisa, what has your daily basic routine been since your divorce and move? Well, I am trying to find balance. I am trying to find a balance between continuing to grow and heal and learn to be with myself, to date, to have time with friends, and work. And I'm just trying to find that balance. So. Basically, that's what I do. Every day is a little bit different and it's been amazing. And a lot of time I've been spending 
with my family and my grandkids, which has just been incredible, being able to watch them grow and I'm super grateful that I'm near them again. This is from Alia Sibin. Sibin. When is your birthday, Lisa? I feel like you've been 49 forever. You look stinking amazing. I'm excited to watch the rest of this video. Thank you, Aaliyah. It has been a long year, and yes, I've been 49 this whole year. I will be 50 on November 1st, which is right around the corner. This is from Shannon Lynn, mom of three. Do you struggle with any perimenopause issues? Do you have an opinion or any experience with hormone replacement? No, Shannon, I have not had any menopause or perimenopause symptoms. I had a hysteroscopy with ablation uh, 10, 15, 15 years ago. So I don't menstruate and that makes it really hard for me to tell what's going on with my cycle. I do still have my ovaries, so I do get cramps and kind of like have, you know, I still have my hormones, but I don't feel anything different than I have. I'm hoping I'm just gonna sail right through menopause and not even notice it. I did actually go through a time where I was having horrible hot flashes and I felt terrible, but I found out it was my thyroid levels were off. So any symptoms that I thought had to do with menopause weren't because I feel amazing now. I don't have any hot flashes or anything. And now that my thyroid's getting balanced, I'm feeling wonderful. This is from Kelly Martinez. Would you please be able to make a video on how you do socially with having a limiting diet and if you ever feel sad not eating what other people eat? I have IBS and I'm very limited as well and struggle socially with travel. I feel you, Kelly. Um, like I said, I'm going on vacation right now and the best advice I can give is bring your own food. Don't feel bad about anything if you can't eat what other people eat. I have no problem with it and I'm not gonna be hanging out with people who make me feel bad about anything anyway. So just bring your own food. Don't worry about it. Try to have a good time no matter where you're going. And I think that just makes things so much less stressful and more enjoyable. This question is from Kayla Riggs. I want to know if there was a specific moment or a certain day after you moved into your new place that you remember where all of a sudden you felt like, okay, I'm good and I'm not sad and I'm not what effing am I, <laughs> I'm doing just fine, I'm happy. Or did it just come gradually day by day? Or do you have yet to experience that feeling thus far? No right or wrong answer, of course. I just know you'll give a really great little speech with your answer, whatever it may be. Thank you, Kayla. I feel like for me, the that moment when I knew I was gonna be okay was the day that I moved out and moved into this place. The actual day of the move was super emotional and I did a video on that if you guys want to watch it and I, I didn't get emotional in the video but I did talk about how there was a moment where I just lost it and I broke down and the whole my whole new apartment was just packed from wall to wall with boxes I was exhausted my kids were helping me move everything in and I lost it I just broke down sobbing like curled up in the corner crying my eyes out and my middle son came over and was just holding me and he's like mom it's okay you're so strong my family is amazing and i'm not saying that this whole journey has not been insanely painful because it has you have to grieve you have to feel it you can't just ignore it but there comes a point where for me specifically i need to make a choice okay you're done grieving, move on. Then I have moments where I just need to cry just out of the blue. It, it's, and it's, it's a loss. You, you have to just go with what you're feeling and let it come out when it needs to come out, but make the choice not to suffer. Make the choice not to stay in that pain. Make the choice to move forward. 
So for the next two or three days, I nonstop set up my apartment, made it comfortable. So the first moment that I knew I was gonna be okay was the night that I first slept in this apartment and then it really was an even stronger feeling once everything got set up and I could relax and I just was like sitting on the couch and I was like, I did it, I'm gonna be okay. I'm near my family, I'm near my friends, I can do this. You need to do a lot of self-talk and have a lot of self-love and find yourself. Find yourself, find what you love to do, who you are. Don't listen to what anybody else tells you you should be or shouldn't be. Be yourself, do what makes you happy, do what fills your heart and your soul, and you can't go wrong. This comment is from Haiti Ramirez. Thank you for replying to me. I would like to know what your outlook on life and love now. Would you get married again and are you happy? Yes and yes. I am not aggressively saying, oh, I have to get married again right now. No. Do I believe in marriage? Yes. Would I get married again? Yes. I am not afraid of it. I am not afraid of love. I am not afraid of opening my heart. Is it harder now? Definitely. I think the hardest part is feeling like you know someone and being shown one thing, but the reality is something different. Like the way that everything seemed perfect in our marriage because of his actions and then out of the blue didn't want to be with me. That part is scary, but I, I can't put that on everyone because everyone's not like that. So that is definitely something that I have learned is whatever someone does to you does not mean that everyone else is going to do that to you, but absolutely be cautious, be aware of it. You don't want to go through the same thing again and don't jump into anything. My story is a bit similar to yours. I got ran over by a car and also suffer from chronic pain. I have metal and pins in my legs, etc. I was also married two times. I'm 46 years old. I have, I have two daughters, 23 and four years old. I cur I'm currently separated from my second husband and I'm trying to start over. Sorry for the long text. Haiti, hang in there. You can do this. Like I said, just think about yourself. Trust the process. It may work, it may not. Just do what's right for you. Trust your gut. Trust your intuition in what is going to be right for you. Number one is you have to take care of you. We are no good to anyone else unless we take care of ourselves first, even for our children. I know that our children, I have three children, they are my life, they are my everything. They're grown now, they're out of the house, but they still are always, always in the front of my mind all the time and I'm always thinking about them. I know that the more that I work on myself and the more that I heal and the more that I grow, the better mom I can be for them. Whether they're little or grown or out of the house, you have to put you first and take care of yourself first. This question is from Debbie Bridwell. Hi Lisa, I love watching your videos, especially the heartfelt videos that you made when you were dealing with your divorce and move. I think so many of us could relate to your situation in some ways. I know I would love to see a video on where your journey has taken you since your move. What have you been doing, your family, and how are you doing personally? How is your love life, lol? Please consider making one of these videos. Thanks, Lisa, and take care. Thank you, Debbie, and this is the video. Like I said, everything's going great. I'm dating, my family is amazing, I'm working on myself, I'm moving forward. Again, if you guys have any more specific questions, please leave them in the comments below so I have more specific questions for my next life update video. This question is from Sissy Zeno. If you do a life update Q&A, my questions would be hard to put into words. It would be a conversation in exchange of experience and thoughts surrounding many topics. Parenting now adult children Definitely tough to let your babies go, but what I have found is just 
be there when you can love them they always are your babies if you have any specific questions about that again please put them below i have a hard time just like rambling about stuff probably the 75 percent introvert it pretty much everything stays in my brain unless i'm having a conversation with someone healing and the aftermath of lost romance again i made a choice to move forward i am staying positive staying strong allowing myself to grieve when I feel the need and moving forward. How to stay motivated. Um, it's in your brain, you guys. It, I promise you it's that simple. It is forcing your thoughts to change and go from negative to positive. Finding the positive out of everything negative is how you stay positive. It's a choice. It's a mental choice. It's just a shift in your brain. Again, I will post all of the books that I read the five years before my marriage when I was going through another breakup and how I learned and grew and how these books helped me so much. I feel like you're going to take what works for you out of each of the books and whatever resonates with you, you're going to go, yes, that's what I'm going to use to help me get through it. So any little bits and pieces that you can take with you to kind of make your own way of healing is what I recommend. And do you have employment outside of your channel? Nope, again, this is it you guys. I do YouTube, I have a blog. I've been blogging for five years. I just kind of recently started YouTube about, I think my first real YouTube video where I was interacting with people was about a year and a half ago and I have a Facebook and an Instagram so this is what I do and it's so funny when I get all of these comments where people are like oh yeah you spend so much time on YouTube you maybe if you got off YouTube and got into reality your marriage wouldn't have fallen apart or whatever people say that's like me telling you don't go to your job every day this is what I do this is my job, this is my work. So I'm at work, when you see me here, I'm working. So if you're telling me to get off YouTube, you're telling me to quit my job. Are you an outdoorsy girl? Only at the ocean. I actually grew up a country girl and that's not who I am. I grew up camping and fishing and nope, not who I am anymore and it's funny because it took a long time for me to figure out who I was because when you grow up in a certain environment and in a certain way, you think that's who you have to be. That's who you're always going to be. That, you know, you, you got to dress a certain way and act a certain way and that's who you are. Not true. I finally have realized who I am and it's not an outdoorsy country girl. I'm not a city girl either. I'm more, I am happiest by the ocean. Really, there's no other place in this world that I would rather be than by the ocean. Have you dated yet? Yes, like I said, I'm dating, not rushing anything, only dating people that I could possibly, potentially see a future with, and if it happens, it happens. Not if, when, when it happens, we will both just know and I trust that the timing will be right. Totally not rushing anything. Anyway, love your videos. Love to you from California, 51 year old female. Hugs and kisses. Thank you so much. This question is from Sarah Fuller. How's life been separated? Are you readjusting to being single? Has the ex tried contacting you? I wish the best for you and true happiness. Thank you, Sarah. Um, I, I think I already answered all these questions. Um, no, we have had no contact except for that one email with our divorce date attached to it, which I deleted. And um, yeah, how's life separated, readjusting to being single? I'm happier than I have been in a long time. And do I wanna be single? Of course not nobody wants to be single nobody wants to be alone but I would rather be single than be with the wrong person and I believe that if we keep working on ourselves and growing that 
when it's time the right person will come into our life. So that's all the questions that I'm going to answer today. I'm so sorry if I didn't get to your questions, but if you do have any, this is the perfect place to leave your comments below. So when I do my next video, I will come back to the comments and I will answer all of your questions in the next video. Don't forget to follow me on Facebook and Instagram at beauty101 by Lisa to follow my vacation. I love you guys so much. Bye.